It's very common nowadays to hear all of those who fought in the First World War described as heroes, despite the fact that many of them very clearly were not. But many of you will still be surprised at just how many malingerers the British Army had during the First World War. It's not surprising, really, when you sweep up most of the men of military age, put them all in uniform, send them overseas for four years to fight for their country. When you do that, you'll sweep up the whole of humanity. You'll sweep up the good guys, the bad guys, the saints and the sinners, the troublemakers, the lazy, you name it, they'll all be there. All of those men who go out of their way to avoid carrying parties and sentry duties, and of course going up into the front line to avoid trench duty. In the most extreme cases, some of those would find themselves facing a firing squad. But most of the time, there were only two real ways to get out of the trenches, and that was either to be killed or wounded, which was a bit extreme, or to appeal to the medical officer. The battalion MO had the authority and the power, if he thought that you were genuinely ill, to send you down the line to the field hospital, maybe for a couple of days rest until you felt better. Of course, he was nearly always much wiser than you were. Battalion MOs could spot a malingerer a mile off. They'd seen it all and heard it all before. In fact, there are even stories, almost certainly apocryphal, of men turning up with their trigger fingers shot off, saying, Sir, sir, I've, I've had my trigger fingers shot off. I can't fire my rifle anymore. Saying, oh, not a problem. You're just the chap we're looking for, for the trench mortar battery. On your way. Or, or sir, sir, I've, I've lost all my front teeth. Ah, oh, it's not a problem, old chap. We don't need you to bite the Germans. Where you go. In nearly every instance, the answer from the MO to all of these chaps with their imaginary illnesses was number nine pill, medicine and duty. Next. And the number nine pill took on an almost mythical status amongst First World War soldiers. In the Great War Huts collection, we've got this 1917 pills and tablets tin, which, whilst by no means complete anymore, missing some of the jars, it still has the listing of everything that it would have had in it. But it does still have the little tablet jar, which would originally have held the number nine pills. In fact, it's still got the number nine on the back with poison written underneath it. Some say that these were just a placebo, but they certainly weren't. It was an opiate. The description of the pill is on the front, um, and uh, soldiers described them as little black pills, although the description here mentions blue, so presumably they were just a very dark blue. But what they were was a laxative. So once you'd been given your number nine pill, medicine and duty, off you'd go to spend the rest of the afternoon in the latrine. And I suspect it was quite some time before you thought you'd try and pull another one of those stunts. <laughs>